फिफ्टींथ सेंचुरी बी सी ई पर्शिया थर्टींथ सेंचुरी ए डी इंग्लैंड फोर्टींथ सेंचुरी फ्रांस एंड जर्मनी फिफ्टींत सेंचुरी पोर्तुगाल सिक्सटींत सेंचुरी पैपल स्टेट्स ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी नाजी जर्मनी डू यू नो वॉट ऑल दीज पीरियड हैव इन कॉमन द परसिक्यूशन ऑफ जूस रीजन्स चेंज इन द माइंड ऑफ परसिक्यूटर्स बट द आउटकम वॉज ऑलवेज द सेम फोर्स्ट एक्सपल्शन ऑफ कंट्रीज लार्ज एंड लॉन्ग एक्स्टैब्लिश्ड जूश पॉपुलेशन देर हैज नॉट बीन अ सिंगल सेंचुरी वेन जूज वर नॉट मार्जिनलाइज स्पेशली आफ्टर दियर स्किजम विथ क्रिस्टियनिटी एंड क्रिस्टियनिटी इज रैपिड ग्रोथ जूज फाउंड दैम सेल्फ इन अ पोजिशन वेर दे नॉट हैव एनी कंट्री टू कॉल देअर ओन परसिक्यूटेड अक्रॉस यूरोप द जूस फाउंड सोलेस इन अ प्रोमिस प्रोमिस मेड बाय द गॉड हिमसेल्फ टू अब्राहम of the promised land a homeland for jews where they can finally live in peace but the peace for which they have to fight and fight with a community that had nothing to do with their earlier persecutions hello my name is manish and this is my attempt to bring to you books that have left an impact on me and hold the potential to do the same with you you are watching the thought matrix where we bring to you content that makes you think and put those gray cells to work The book that I intend to introduce today is called O Jerusalem or as pronounced in Hebrew Jerusalem. I personally prefer the Hebrew pronunciation so I'll always call it Jerusalem. So O Jerusalem was written by Dominic Lepere and Larry Collins. Both were brilliant writers. They have written some of the wonderful books like Is Paris Burning, Freedom at Midnight, The City of Joy. Out of the top 5 books of Dominic Lepere Three are based in India. One is on India's freedom. One is on the Bhopal gas tragedy, and the other is on city of Kolkata. For his wonderful work in India, for his charities and contributions to India, Dominic Lepere received Padma Bhushan Award, which is the third highest civilian award in 2008. Together, Dominic Lepere and Larry Collins are famous for their investigative journalist style of writing. Dominic decided to write this book when he was traveling in Israel. He wanted to visit Jerusalem. And on his way around the Judean hills, he saw many burnt trucks on the sideways of the road. And they were decorated with flowers. When he asked the cab driver the story of those trucks and the story that he got to hear ignited a fire within him to take that story to the world. And that resulted in this book. this book on the birth of israel now this book o jerusalem does not talk about the period when jews were persecuted or how they were persecuted just so that you don't confuse the introduction or the beginning of this video with the contents of this book this book extensively talks about the birth of israel from the period of passing of un resolution for the partition of palestine to the period of first truce in july 1948 between israel and the five arab armies now whenever we read history or any work of historical events it, we need to be extremely careful as there exist a colored glass between the present and history victors add their own color to the history and it is often used as a tool of propaganda i picked up this book because it was introduced to me as neutral account of real events they have neither demonized nor whitewashed any side Secondly my interest in this subject was more because I wanted to understand how a country that did not existed back then did not have a formal government did not have an army or weapons could defeat five arab armies how was that possible so now victories in the 50s 60s 70s and 80s between all the wars that were fought by israel could be explained they had superior weapons they had better army they were more organized but how did they win this first war of independence and this book gives you that answer the answer that i derived from this book was that the jews were very focused very dedicated towards their cause while the arabs though passionate were very divided and leaderless i'll read a few passages to give you a glimpse of what i want to say but you must understand 
that watching this video from your home sitting on a couch you may find them a bit extreme but if you think from the mindset of a community that has been persecuted for more than 2500 years they could not leave their future generations vulnerable to further persecutions some of the sacrifices may look small on the grand scale of historical events however they were so big that they need to be recognized page 227 the life of a man who should have been first among them was spared by an extraordinary coincidence at the moment the guard had started to roll the booby trap car towards his office window vivian herzog had got up to go to the bathroom untouched by the explosion he began to work his way from room to room helping the injured as he stepped into the ruin office of agency's legal adviser herzog started to tremble he recognized the gray funnel skirt on the blood covered body lying on the floor my god he whispered as he sank to his knees what are you doing here there was no answer from his wife's inert figure tenderly he bent over and brushed away some of the blood spilling down her handsome face as gently as he could he slipped his arm under her body and carried her downstairs to an ambulance two and a half hours later precisely at 1 o'clock as he had promised vivian herzog called at the united nations headquarters to take colonel rosher lund to lunch he excused his injured wife's absence and apologized for his bad regled appearance then the two men left for the home of ruven shilo a senior officer of the agency he too had been injured by daud's bomb and his lacerated head was swathed in bandages that left only four small holes for his eyes his nose and his mouth the three men had a glass of sherry then they sat down to lunch shilo sipping soup with a straw through one of the holes in the mummy like mask enveloping his face herzog his shirt dark with the blood stains of his injured wife the norwegian his mood shifting from astonishment to awe we must convince these people we are capable of managing our nation when the english leave herzog thought now here these two Jewish gentlemen were supposed to meet the UN executive and convince him that they can manage a new state. Both of them went through personal tragedies and yet they were there immediately after the tragedy and presented themselves in the best way possible. Now I'll give you a, another example of story of a girl that impacted me the most. Page number six zero four. Fourteen and fifteen year old Gardner youths carried messages under shell fire from one Hagna post to another. One of them, Tova Goldberg, a dark haired, big framed girl, always ran to her destination, thinking that if she did, the shells had less chances of finding her. She could not run fast enough. One morning, an Arab shell caught up with her. When the stunned girl recovered her senses. she saw her hand severed from her wrist lying on the ground before her its fingers still holding around the message she picked it up and staggered to the hagna post to which it was addressed here is your message the 16 year old girl said passing her severed head hand to the soldier now please get me a doctor now these are just one of the few incidences out of hundreds of incidences mentioned in this book my purpose here was just to create an interest within you so that you pick up this book and read it it's not a easy task it's a 600 plus pages book so it's a very long commitment now as regards the writing of this book it's really very well written describing war like situations maps armies is very difficult and yet it is written in such a language it is very easy for you to visualize everything the subject is very complex it can be gauged from the fact that this was the first conflict that went to un after un's formation i believe when the author started writing this book was a very opportune time 
most important characters involved in creation of israel were alive then they had an opportunity to sit with david ben gurion the architect of israeli state it is said uh, they have mentioned in the books that david ben gurion had meticulously maintained all notes of day to day events in his notebooks and they had an opportunity to read them they had an opportunity to meet golda meir apart from her all other contributions she was the one who made buying those weapons possible by raising funds at the right time it's a brilliant journalistic work it's a lesson how countries if pushed into tough times must act i would definitely recommend this book to my viewers i hope i have made justice to this introduction that is all for today i hope you like the video please please do not forget to like and subscribe the video it's very important for us thank you